Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm Zenas Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at Black Hat 2025 in Las Vegas. I'm here with Carl Windsor, CISO of Fortinet. Carl, uh, first time on with me, so uh, great to have you. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about transparency and disclosures. Before that, though, just a quick bio on yourself. Oh, so uh, I've been um, at Fortinet for 20 years now. Um, I ran a managed security service before I uh, joined Fortinet and I based it on Fortinet technology. And I've worked my way through Fortinet for the last 20 years and till now, taking over the CISO role. Prior to this, I took roles in product management uh, and the support, support team. Yeah, I think uh, everyone at Fortinet's been there 20 or so. A <laughs> relative newcomer. Yeah. yeah. Now we're gonna, as I said, we're gonna talk about uh, transparency and disclosures, which is a very interesting topic within the context of cyber because every vendor handles them differently. Um, some, you know, take it very seriously, some not so much. But why are, why are they important to you? What do you t so it's, it, for us, we feel it's more important to us than probably any other vendor. We ship 55% we ship, uh, of the worldwide firewalls. We have 6 million devices active worldwide. With that number of devices there, we've got to make sure we're at the top of our game when it comes to security. And when we do fix issues, when we do improve, it's really important that our customers know. They know they've got to take action. And to do that, we've got to tell our customers, we've got to inform them, um, and then that helps them to secure their network. So we, we just have to provide that information to our yeah. customers. And so for a vendor like yourself, what does that look like? And what does it look like from your customer's perspective? So from our perspective, uh, we spend um, we spend a huge amount of money in securing our products. Uh, we uh, last year last year alone, seventy five percent of all of the vulner vulnerabilities we disclosed were our vulnerabilities that we found. Um, so yeah, not and, that, and that's found. that's really important. Uh, actually, it's funny because sometimes the media takes out of proportion. But I would rather you find it than me find it as a customer. Right? Absolutely, yeah. if you're a customer, you're paying us. You we, uh, you want your yeah. uh, your vendor to be going out and looking for those vulnerabilities. So we invest in that. We provide that information. We give that to our customers. Now the next step is well, customers need to take action, um, and the diligent uh, customers with good cyber hygiene, they'll do that. They'll then take that information. They'll be grateful. They'll go away and remediate the problem. We've added in features like uh, auto updates to to try and simplify that process for them. Oh yeah, that makes sense. And uh, uh, and so you you've taken that process now and you've made it a fully automated one. Correct. So to take a lot of the complexity out of the van. Yeah, now if yeah. you're a hospital, yeah, yeah. you're not going to turn on auto updates because right. you know, it could take out the network while an operation's taking place. Um, but if you're a mom and pop shop, me at home, I enable auto update. I go to bed, next morning the device is updated. Yeah. Now, if, if the vendor handles it correctly and the customer does too, um, do you think this can be a business enabler versus a compliance checkbox? Um, definitely. I mean, all of these things are business enablers. For, you know, for us, it enable you know the the good will that we get from our customers over the things that we're doing. Definitely, is a business enabler for us. Um, but also, this we can't just have compliance checkboxes anymore. Customers have got to be able to uh, take actionable, um, make actionable changes to their network that are going to improve their security and ultimately their business. So yeah, these things are not compliance checkboxes anymore. Upgrading is a de facto a fact of life. We have to keep away of the, uh, ahead of the threat actors and updating and keeping the, your devices up to date and good cyber hygiene is part of yeah. that. Um, back when I was an IT pro, we used to skip updates. And nobody does that anymore, right? Not anymore, so, yeah. not anymore. Yeah, now, from a customer standpoint, uh, as I mentioned, all vendors tend to handle these things a little differently. Uh, what are the things customers should look for to understand that their vendor actually is committed to, to transparency and disclosures and, and the vulnerabilities when they find them? Yeah, I think the first thing is, you know, did the vendor sign up to the CISA, uh, the CISA Secure by Design pledge? Part of that is transparency. and. Yeah, we we were we were one of the industry editors for the CISA uh, Secure by Design pledge. We also uh, were one of the first signatories. Now that's important because to be part of that, you had to commit towards transparency. But the other thing is, look at uh, go to the customer, go to the vendor's website. How open and honest are they? Do they publish vulnerabilities uh, on the website? Um, and do you see in, both internally found and externally found vulnerabilities? Um, that's, you know, if you're seeing none of the internally found, that means they're either fixing silently 
um, or maybe they're not even lucky. Yeah, or just not telling you, which is the worst. Yeah, of all. that's the worst because yeah. you, if you don't know to upgrade, you're not going to. If yeah. you see, on the other one is if you see a crash um, in the in the AV engine. Well, if you've never seen a crash in the AV engine, you're not going to update. So if someone says it's a bug rather than a vulnerability, again, customers won't upgrade. So absolute transparency is is key. Yeah, and Fortinet's a big uh, believer in PCER. Right, and, uh, and and talk about that and why, how that helps you build your credit online. Yeah, so so uh, this comes back to publishing those vulnerabilities, you know, and two things actually. One one is the fact that we have six million devices worldwide. We've got that big duty of care to our customers. So looking for issues, finding the issues, fixing them, getting them into the hands of the customers in a timely manner before they can be exploited is really important. And that's why having a robust piece of process is absolutely key. So customers know when advisories are going to come out, when they have to update, and importantly, when they have to uh, believe what the vendor is saying. If you don't publish information or if you change maybe the, the CVSS score and try to minimize things, Customers then don't know how to trust you. We're very key, we, we use CVSS scoring, we keep our consistency and make sure our customers know when we, when we tell them they need to upgrade, they know they need to do so. So that consistency is really key in a piece of it. Yeah, now with, with new customers, is there um, a bit of a, I guess a trust period that you often find you have to go through um, uh, to, you know, for when they first start working with you and you start reporting them that you know maybe they skip a couple of things like that uh, versus your long-standing customers that probably just you know uh, trust you out because you've built that credibility yeah I mean we do we do have to explain to customers what our process is and we have to explain sometimes you know why we might have more vulnerabilities than somebody else is because we're finding them well plus your portfolio is so big oh yeah right? we, you're gonna find more than a single product company. absolutely yeah. absolutely so we have to explain we have to be clear and honest with our customers um, Sometimes customers know that out of the door, they like that transparency and they buy into Fortinet because of that. Sometimes, yeah, we have to go through an ed educational process. Um, you know, it depends on the customer. Yeah, yeah. And this also extends your network products too, correct? It's not just security. Volume. This is all of our products. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about, yes, we have net, um, uh, the firewall product, our next generation firewall. We have wireless switching, 5G devices. Um, right the way through to things like voice, um, voice um, and phone systems, um, video and, and camera systems, web application firewalls, we've got a huge range of products. And has um, uh, the rise of AI allowed you to test your products any differently to help you find them a little faster or maybe test them a little differently to make sure that... Uh, we, we are using those tools. Yeah, yeah. The AI tools are giving us the ability to speed up finding where issues might be, but you still need the people-based services to be able to find, the, you know, get to the bottom of the real real problems. I'm hoping that will change. I'm hoping AI will really allow us to speed things up. Yeah. Yeah, maybe well, next and that, would, and that would actually let you find them even in pre-production pre production cycles and things like that. And, right? and we're doing a lot of testing. Yeah. So, for, you know, SAST, SAST and DAS testing, we use three different SAS tools, nine different DAS tools. We aggregate results. We're using AI in those areas. Um, and yeah, finding things early as possible is really important. But good engineers who can then find the other things is, is important. Yeah. Well. So there's always room for people, I guess, not. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I don't think AI yet is going to do away with all of the security engineers. Yeah. So all these people at Black Hat, they'll be here next year. And well, the one thing I hear about future. AI is that you can't, most companies can't hire enough security people anyways. Yeah. And so if you can fill that gap with AI, then that's a big win. Yeah. Now we are here at the show. What are you looking forward to, to learning here this year? What are you um, You mentioned AI. I mean, there, yeah. the, I wanted to see how, how AI can really help us. We've tested some tools. We've looked at different things there in that space. Um, so definitely how AI can help us either, you know, scanning code, you know, early on in, in the, the, the DevOps cycle and identifying issues there or from vulnerability testing and penetration testing. Um, we have some of our own tooling there, but I'm definitely interested in seeing what the other vendors are doing as well. Yeah, so last year at Black Hat 24, the big theme was AI. It seems this year, when I look at the agenda, 
it's a gentic. A gentic. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and that's going to be a big deal this year. So. Yeah, and yeah. the Fulton uh, have some solutions. I don't think we're announcing it here. We've yeah. already announced it for a gentic AI for uh, managing systems and being able to identify issues and threats within your system. But yeah, we're. I, you can guarantee Agentix is going to be everywhere in every single yeah. vendor. All right. Well, thanks for the update on what you guys are doing in the area of disclosures of vulnerabilities. And keep doing that. I think every vendor should take it like the most serious thing that they do because their customers are at risk if they don't. Yeah. So anything else you want to add? Uh, no, I, I think, yeah. yeah, just to know that we, we're on top of it. We're, we're just staying ahead of the adversaries. Um, but, I mean, key takeaways, update your devices. Cyber hygiene is the most important yeah. thing. Stay up to date. Yeah, stay up to date. And uh, you know, clearly, because the, it, whenever I read about these ransomware reports and cyber reports, the problem is getting worse before it's going to get better, I think so. Yeah, and, and I think the, the growth of the attack surface and the yeah. fact that you know, networks are becoming more complicated, it, it is only going to get worse. So let's remove that as a problem, keep your devices yeah, up Yeah, in fact, uh, I did a survey this year and I asked about the role of the network and uh, over 90% of respondents said the network's more important, but 83% said it's more complex. Yes. And so anytime you add complexity, yeah. you bring security risk like it builds up. All right. Absolutely. All right, well, I appreciate the time. So on behalf of... Carl Windsor, CISO for Fortinet. I'm Zia's Caraval from ZK Research, saying thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time on the next episode of ZCast.